Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. This is the going to be the solar collapse video, but first I kind of wanted to show why I was doing it. I didn't want to cut down any more trees. You see the shading there and how low the front side was. So my original plan was to raise everything by four feet because uh, I know how to solve problems like getting dust out of my gloves. And I had all this extra wood around. I figured I might as well use it to raise the solo array up. I did put a little bit of a thought into how to do this problem. Um, but first, just to discuss a little bit more why and why I felt the need to do this stupid thing. We, uh, our van broke down and we got a really good deal on an electric vehicle, a Ford uh, Mustang Mach-E is, is what we got, the, the very base version, and they were selling it for, it was like $29,000, which if you look at the current prices in MSRP, um, it's pretty unbelievable that it's like the blue book, we could sell it and still make money off of that vehicle, even though it's brand new. So it's kind of crazy. You know, they just aren't selling. Um, I'd like to talk more about electric vehicles. I don't, I think they make it sense for a lot of people, but they also don't make sense for a lot of other people. And the, there's a lot of uh, crazy talk I hear on both sides that just doesn't make sense. Uh, logically, people are just kind of talking um, about basically from emotions. And I don't think anyone should be forced to drive an electric vehicle. So I'm definitely against that. Uh, I'd, I'd like to go more into that at some point, but this is the, this is the solar uh, collapse video, not the electric uh, thoughts on electric vehicles video, which I, I I'll do at some point because, you know, I, I think I could be a, a little bit of a voice for reason. There's some crazy stuff that I hear on both sides. But enough of that. We're talking about the collapse of the solar array. This is the wood that I had on the uh, on the project that I had all this on site. Uh, so I'm kind of cutting it to size a little bit. You'll see me uh, prepping it a little bit more here. I'll, I'll skip to the real footage and I won't show this a lot. But I just I really I really enjoy the property out there and I really like the trees that I have. Uh, the, the the other reason is I have a really big tree that kind of shades the water tanks, and I don't want to cut that down. But that's also the tree that causes the worst of the problems for the solar array in the winter. Uh, mind, it's only in the winter that this is a problem. I built the array in a sum in the summer. You know, I knew I was in the really far south here in uh, central Texas, and I I really didn't think the sun would dip as low as it did. I should have done maybe. A little bit more math to figure out the angle of the sun in, in the winter before I built the array. Um, but you know, if I if I would have put it just a few more feet to the to the north side, I think it would have been fine. But whatever, the, you know, it, it is what it is. <laughs> it almost always is. Uh, here's really where I start getting into the prep. Uh, my first idea was I need to get rid of the uh, th that post on the left side because the post on the left side I'm going to use to uh, jack up the right side. So here, this is where I really started going wrong. Later, you'll see the solar array started shifting to the right because this support that I was using from the tractor to lift it up with started slipping, and that really caused the whole array to start shifting over towards my other shed there which was pretty much the, the the problem that that i had but back to this fence post here as i kind of knock it loose i just uh i had to get this free because this is what what i was going to use for the other side just kind of cutting it to size here for the farm jack so that it'll have enough clearance to raise up uh tack it in place but then i also screwed in i'd I guess that video got cut. Anyway, I uh, had to nail in some extra wood to the left and the right of the jack because it was kind of wanting to shift to the left or the right. That might have been a first sign of trouble that I maybe should have stopped, but I just kept on plowing through. And here I'm kind of just putting the post up there and wondering how much higher I have to go. And I think this is when I kind of, this is the first step or the first time really when it kind of hits me that I have to jack this thing up high. Four feet doesn't seem like a lot, but it is a lot of room. What I'm trying to do is I have the backside loose, and 
I figured it would be better to kind of just, I, I thought I could just jack right up and the wood would be strong enough to basically support itself while I go at an angle. So that's what I'm trying to do. And that was a really, really near miss that it, maybe I just should have stopped there. But I don't know why I set the post up there to, to I knew I had to go higher and it would cause it to get free of the rafters and you know i don't know what i was thinking there maybe i should have stopped um but as, as, as i keep going here you'll you'll see kind of continued signs where it's like you know if if you ever have that that feeling in your gut where it's just you know, maybe it was because it was another windy day, and I talked a little bit about that in the gate opener video. I just don't like wind. It does not feel it, – it, it, it adds stress. And, you know, here I'm kind of just looking at it, and I'm like, you know, this this doesn't feel right. I'm having to go up a lot higher than I thought. It kind of looks scarier than I thought it would be in my head. You know, it should have been a stopping point. I I should have really stopped here and I still could have reset. I could have lowered things back down, but instead I take off that post and nail it up because now I need a higher post than what I was originally using on the old Jack. Um, but you know, it's kind of getting to the point where it's really a lot higher than I thought it would be. And things are shifting more than I thought they would there. I'm kind of just setting up the new post so that you can kind of see how much longer I have to go before um, before I'm, I'm good on this side. And you saw when I raised on the tractor, how much that moved to the right. That was, that was, again, I should have just tried to stabilize things and reset or just started over. I was determined to keep going. So I found some more ratchet straps and this is what I should have done from the beginning. But you see how crooked that pillar is uh, that's the, the, the tractor's jacking up. I thought if I pull it over enough, it would be good. Here I'm on the other side. I could not get the jack on the outside. I did try that first. Um, I did make sure I was aware of the dogs at the time. I knew that they were kind of, uh, they, they were around, but this time they went into the RV and they were safe. So I, I didn't really think more of, you know, after that. And I just, I couldn't fit the jack on this side, which forced me to have to crawl underneath, um, and the precarious side. You see how the, the other side there with the tractor was sloping more. I really should have just picked up on that side first. I mean, I shouldn't have been doing anything, but if, if I wanted this to work, I really should have picked up on the tractor side first. I think it really would have stabilized things, and I probably would have pulled it off. I really think that if I wouldn't have made that mistake, but I didn't realize how bad things were shifted uh, at this point. And so there, just, you know, just a little bit of, of movement out of this side caused the whole thing to fall over. And watch it in slow mo here a few times. Yeah, I just kind of, yeah, there's, I'm just kind of, <laughs> uh, after, th then I kind of start to panic. Where are the dogs? I want to make sure the dogs are okay. I didn't see him out there at that point, but there's Hopper now. Um, he actually thought it was a fun toy and climbed all over it. <laughs> but I was fortunate to have really not had anything bad happen to me, which was kind of a miracle. I don't recommend doing this. I only broke one solar panel. It's, it's pretty much uh, awesome that it came out like that. So I'm in the process of rebuilding. You'll see some videos there. But this video is done, and I thank you for... Um, tuning in along. I don't recommend doing what I did trying to do it. Uh, I feel like I learned a few things. And <laughs> if I ever do something like this again, hopefully I'll tell myself not to. Uh, but if I do, I'm, hopefully I've learned enough that I can figure it out. But anyway, my wife kind of describes me as 99% um, brilliance where I can pull things off and she's always amazed, but she's kind of come to expect the 1% spectacular failures. Uh, and she just kind of takes that as she as as things move along. She actually wasn't mad. I thought she was going to be furious, um, but she wasn't. And um, so we kind of had a, a good a, a good a good chuckle out of this after we knew everybody was safe. And 
Yeah, anyway, this is basically what not to do, so don't be like me. I hope you guys all have a, uh, I'm not sure when I'll upload this, but have a Merry Christmas, and uh, yeah, don't, um, hopefully this is a cautionary tale for someone. Anyway, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoy this new format of me narrating things. I kind of like talking, so I think I think I'll keep doing this, but we'll see. Anyway, again, have a great day. Bye.